October 5th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Jeremiah chapters 24 and 25 from the Old Testament. The Lord showed me two baskets of figs sitting before his temple. This happened after King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon deported Jehoiakim's son, King Jeconiah of Judah. He deported him and the leaders of Judah along with the craftsmen and metal workers and took them to Babylon. One basket had very good-looking figs in it. They looked like those that had ripened early. The other basket had very bad-looking figs in it, so bad they could not be eaten. The Lord said to me, What do you see, Jeremiah? I answered, I see figs. The good ones look very good, but the bad ones look very bad, so bad that they cannot be eaten. The Lord said to me, I, the Lord, the God of Israel, say, The exiles whom I sent away from here to the land of Babylon are like those good figs. I consider them to be good. I will look after their welfare and will restore them to this land. There I will build them up and will not tear them down. I will plant them firmly in the land and will not uproot them. I will give them the desire to acknowledge that I am the Lord. I will be their God and they will be my people, for they will wholeheartedly return to me. I, the Lord, also solemnly assert King Zedekiah of Judah, his officials, and the people who remain in Jerusalem or who have gone to live in Egypt are like those bad figs. I consider them to be just like those bad figs that are so bad they cannot be eaten. I will bring such disaster on them that all the kingdoms of the earth will be horrified. I will make them an object of reproach, a proverbial example of disaster, I will make them an object of ridicule, an example to be used in curses. This is how they will be remembered whenever I banish them. I will bring war, starvation, and disease on them until they are completely destroyed from the land I gave them and their ancestors. In the fourth year that Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, was king of Judah, the Lord spoke to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah. That was the same as the first year that Nebuchadnezzar was king of Babylon. So the prophet Jeremiah spoke to all the people of Judah and to all the people who were living in Jerusalem. For the last 23 years, from the 13th year that Josiah, son of Ammon, was ruling in Judah until now, the Lord has been speaking to me. I told you over and over again what he said, but you would not listen. Over and over again, the Lord has sent his servants, the prophets, to you, but you have not listened or paid attention. He said, through them, each of you must turn from your wicked ways and stop doing the evil things you were doing. If you do, I will allow you to continue to live here in the land that I gave to you and your ancestors as a lasting possession. Do not pay allegiance to other gods and worship and serve them. Do not make me angry by the things that you do then I will not cause you any harm. So now the Lord says, You have not listened to me, but you have made me angry by the things that you have done. Thus you have brought harm on yourselves. Therefore the Lord who rules over all says, You have not listened to what I said. So I, the Lord, affirm that I will send for all the peoples of the north and my servant King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. I will bring them against this land and its inhabitants and all the nations that surround it. I will utterly destroy this land, its inhabitants, and all the nations that surround it, and make them everlasting ruins. I will make them objects of horror and hissing scorn. I will put an end to the sounds of joy and gladness, to the glad celebration of brides and grooms in these lands. I will put an end to the sound of people grinding meal. I will put an end to lamps shining in their houses. This whole area will become a desolate wasteland. These nations will be subject to the king of Babylon for 70 years. But when the 70 years are over, I will punish the king of Babylon and his nation for their sins. I will make the land of Babylon an everlasting ruin. I, the Lord, affirm it. I will bring on that land everything that I said I would. I will bring on it everything that is written in this book. I will bring on it everything that Jeremiah has prophesied against all the nations. For many nations and great kings will make slaves of the king of Babylon and his nation too. I will repay them for all they have done. 
So the Lord, the God of Israel, spoke to me in a vision. Take this cup from my hand. It is filled with the wine of my wrath. Take it and make the nations to whom I send you drink it. When they have drunk it, they will stagger to and fro and act insane. For I will send wars sweeping through them. So I took the cup from the Lord's hand. I made all the nations to whom he sent me drink the wine of his wrath. I made Jerusalem and the cities of Judah, its kings and its officials drink it. I did it so Judah would become a ruin. I did it so Judah, its kings and its officials would become an object of horror and of hissing scorn, an example used in curses. Such is already becoming the case. I made all these other people drink it, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, his attendants, his officials, his people, the foreigners living in Egypt, all the kings of the land of Uz, all the kings of the land of the Philistines, the people of Ashkelon, Gaza, Ekron, the people who had been left alive from Ashdod, all the people of Edom, Moab, Ammon, all the kings of Tyre, all the kings of Sidon, all the kings of the coastlands along the sea, the people of Dedan, Tima, Buzz, and all the desert people who cut their hair short at the temples, all the kings of Arabia who live in the desert, all the kings of Zimri, all the kings of Elam, all the kings of Media, all the kings of the north, whether near or far from one another, and all the other kingdoms which are on the face of the earth. After all of them have drunk the wine of the Lord's wrath, the king of Babylon must drink it. Then the Lord said to me, Tell them that the Lord God of Israel, who rules over all, says, Drink this cup until you get drunk and vomit. Drink until you fall down and can't get up, for I will send wars sweeping through you. If they refuse to take the cup from your hand and drink it, tell them that the Lord, who rules over all, says, You most certainly must drink it. For take note, I am already beginning to bring disaster on the city that I call my own. So how can you possibly avoid being punished? You will not go unpunished, for I am proclaiming war against all who live on the earth. I, the Lord, who rules over all, affirm it. Then Jeremiah make the following prophecy against them. Like a lion about to attack, the Lord will roar from the heights of heaven. From his holy dwelling on high, he will roar loudly. He will roar mightily against his land. He will shout in triumph like those stomping juice from the grapes against all those who live on the earth. The sounds of battle will resound to the ends of the earth, for the Lord will bring charges against the nations. He will pass judgment on all humankind and will hand the wicked over to be killed in war. The Lord so affirms it. The Lord who rules over all says disaster will soon come on one nation after another. A mighty storm of military destruction is rising up from the distant parts of the earth. Those who have been killed by the Lord at that time will be scattered from one end of the earth to the other. They will not be mourned over, gathered up, or buried. Their dead bodies will lie scattered over the ground like manure. Wail and cry out in anguish, you rulers. Roll in the dust, you who shepherd flocks of people. The time for you to be slaughtered has come. You will lie scattered and fallen like broken pieces of fine pottery. The leaders will not be able to run away and hide. The shepherds of the flocks will not be able to escape. Listen to the cries of anguish of the leaders. Listen to the wails of the shepherds of the flocks. They are wailing because the Lord is about to destroy their lands. Their peaceful dwelling places will be laid waste by the fierce anger of the Lord. The Lord is like a lion who has left his lair. So their lands will certainly be laid waste by the warfare of the oppressive nation and by the fierce anger of the Lord. God, too often, I think we like to think of you as a lamb, as kind and loving and grace-filled and merciful. and You are all those things. But we tend to forget that you are also the lion. A lion with fierce anger, as talked about in this chapter of Jeremiah. I don't know why we think that we can poke and prod around the areas of our sin or fully commit to a sinful life and not raise up that anger against us 
Why do we think that that only happened before your son came? Now I know that your son's sacrifice protects us from your anger. But if we are disobedient and we continually choose sin over you uh, and we choose to not have a repentant heart and we choose to not have a new heart that allows us to live a different life, then we will see that anger. Then all people on earth who follow that path will see that anger. And as you put it, there'll be no place to run, no place to hide, no place to escape. The full totality of your anger will be upon us. God, I pray that you help provide me the strength and the wisdom to keep my steps straight and narrow. To remind me why it's so important for me to stay on this path. Not only, obviously, to glorify you and to do what you have created me for, but also for my own sake. That my relationship with you is healthy and my relationship with you is respectful. And my relationship with you is filled with sacrificial love. Could never match what you've done for me, obviously. But it still needs to be filled with sacrificial love that I'm willing to give up the things of this earth to proceed and follow what you have called me to do that are not of this earth. And I know that that's really hard, God. But don't ever let me take for granted the fact that you are being kind and grace-filled and merciful in my life. Don't ever let me forget that there is a mighty lion with incredible anger, with fierce anger, as Jeremiah puts it, ready to either put me right back in line or sadly for some people, destroy them so that there's no place for them to go. God, sometimes we think that we have a safe place here on earth, that you can't see us, that our sins are hidden. We know that that's not true, but we go about our day as though it is. If we could physically see you right in front of us, I doubt that we would do most of the things, if not all the things that we choose to do. But yet we do, because we take for granted that you are not only the gentle lamb in our life, but the mighty sovereign lion, our Lord as well. God, help us keep in mind the totality of who you are in our lives and the power that you have in this world. In your son's name I pray, amen.